My memories of the Isle of Man when the TT's not on, it's just complete tranquility. You can come here, step off the plane, jump into your car and just drive from one point to the other and completely relax. Well, it's the most beautiful place. It suffers from everybody knowing everybody else and half of them being related to each other. But nevertheless, it's a very peaceful place. When the first boat starts rolling in, everybody's out, hotels are painted up and waiting for the people, and then it just starts from the first week of practice. It just gets busier and busier and busier. Just got from one extreme to another. It goes from the epicentre of the Blue Rinse Brigade to this mad motorbiking place, really, yeah. yeah. Every man and the dog that are out to do a motorbike tends to come to the Isle of Man and, yeah, it all goes a bit crackers for a couple of weeks. The whole thing's just such a buzz. People come to see it once and they have to come back. It's dangerous, it's exciting, there's a lot of prestige around the event. It's the most extreme motorcycle race in the world, bar none. We have 37 miles, 230, 240 corners. It takes a lot of learning. You've got any of the short circuits in England and you learn them. In 10 laps you learn them, but this takes probably three years to learn. Six years ago when I first started riding it, I spent a lot of time sat watching a video or reading a book on different riders' perspective. But now, I just turn up and ride. 200 odd corners to learn around here, you're never gonna. I just like to get my helmet on and get cracking. The guys that are class around here, even the riders that have been here for many, many years, they're still continually learning how to ride parts of the circuit better. They know there's a corner that they don't quite take flat open at the moment. They probably could take it flat open if they just change something else on the bike or maybe just change the line that they're using through that corner slightly. And this is the third lap of your Ramsey hairpin after all those flat miles that they put in. You never have a perfect lap round here. It's all about getting the bike feeling right, getting the bike set up right and just getting your head right and getting on with it. To be sure it is nerve wracking. It's a lot of responsibility. If anything's going to break, it's going to break at the TT. And I don't think anyone is very often going into a race with what they would call a perfect motorbike, setup-wise. What we're trying to do is give them the, yeah, the fastest bike, but also the safest bike. It is probably the most severe test of man and machine. If you make a mistake, you will pay for it. The consequences of a mistake can be so big. You're not going to fall off around the TT and expect not to be badly injured. On a circuit, you would like to expect to fall off and not be injured at all. If you fall off here and you don't get injured, you are extremely lucky. If I get out of shape all the time, I need to play to get on with it. It's always going to be out of shape. Because you're going that fast and it's that bumpy, so you just, you just get on with it. Because you never get it perfect everywhere. There's dead smooth bits of the course and there's dead rough bits of the course. You just make the best of a bad job. The potential danger is part of the excitement, part of the adrenaline. everything you do sometimes there's a danger element in it that you can make the danger for yourself if you ride the bike out of control or do something stupid but the, the thrill behind those guys riding those bikes around there Guy Martin does it he says simply for the, the challenge and the thrill of riding at nearly 200 mile an hour between hedges and walls so that's why they do it Martin is home, he pushed it.
That's what gives me the buzz. There's a danger of it all. I'm gonna keep it like that.